Hello and welcome. We are with uh, Shaila Rashid Shora. Yes, she made a name for herself. She exploded onto the firmament of uh, the Indian political landscape in 2016. Shaila, long time back that was, and you made a dramatic transformation from that persona. Tell me a little bit about that persona. Uh, well, uh, it's no secret that uh, I was moved by the human rights situation in Kashmir. I think I've talked about it in a couple of interviews. Uh, so, 2008, 2009, 2010, these were my college years. Uh, and our generation didn't know much about the Kashmir conflict back then. But it was those years that, uh, you know, really raised our consciousness and raised our awareness. Now, when you talk about transformation, uh, I'm literally still talking about the same issues. Uh, if you pay attention. So, only the sort of narrative has changed, the theory of change has changed. Um, but otherwise, I'm talking about the exact same issues even now. Uh, what I'm saying is that, uh, that because of the present government's control on law and order, because of the present government's uh, bold actions, such as crackdown on terror, uh, removal of 370, all of those things, uh, they've got a grip on the situation finally, which uh, if you if you had paid attention to the uh, to LG Saab's speech, LG Manoj Sinaji, Honorable LG of JNK, if you paid attention to his speech at PM Modi's rally recently, he actually touched upon this issue in his speech, which is very surprising for a you know constitutional head of the state. Uh, he said that now there are no more uh, mothers who are who have to watch their children get blinded by pellets, right? Uh, so that's exactly what I'm talking about. Human rights situation has improved. Uh, and if that was my issue with the state, if that was my issue with the government, that issue has been resolved. So I'm actually not saying anything different. And as I said that, it's not I who has changed. I haven't changed. It's the situation on ground that has changed. So what did this government do differently that others couldn't? Um, what it did differently is uh, bring in a clarity to the whole situation. Uh, so you know, you hear this whole um, demand from political parties and they are right in demanding that there should be elections, right? But often what happens is because of electoral compulsions, you are not able to crack down on terror, you are not able to crack down on separatism in the same way uh, that this government has done. Now, uh, when we say crack down, it sounds very harsh. But if you actually pay attention, I was having this debate with my you know, childhood friend. Uh, so she was debating with me, ki, you know, why are you saying pro-government things? There are so many youth in jail still, you know, after 370, at the time of 370, many youth were jailed. And it is an issue, I agree. Uh, however, jo ek bar agar koi band hai, agar koi hawalat mein band hai, agar koi jail mein hai, aap us youth ko wapis la sakte ho. Lekin jo chala gaya, jo matlab pellet ka shikar ho gaya, gun ka shikar ho gaya, usko aap wapis nahi la sakte ho. So what this government has done differently, it has taken a hard stance, no two, uh, you know, sort of questions about it. It's definitely a, um, an iron hand kind of approach that the government has taken against separatism and terror. However, it has saved lives. So when we say harsh measures, uh, at the same time, lives are being saved. If you remember 2008, 9, 10 or 16 or any of those years of mass agitations, uh, they were just simply youth being killed. Yes, government has taken a hard approach. Many of the youth are in jail and you know, if they get reformed, they might also be probably released. But once we lose someone to a bullet, then you can't bring him back. So the government has gotten rid of electoral compulsions. It has done what is necessary. And for my generation, Rahul, like I was born in 88, we have never seen peace. We've never seen a day of peace in our you know, entire sort of uh, lifetime so far. This is the first time that me, my generation, is witnessing what peace can be like and that's a big change. So let me ask you because this crackdown, to use hmm. your words, has come according to some of the established older uh, political families of Kashmir, the Muftis, the Abdullahs, has come at a cost of civil liberties being completely hmm. constricted according yeah. to them. Yeah. So how is this a change that is organic? I mean, it's the, the real voice, according to them, of the Kashmiri people has been repressed by an iron hand. Nothing has changed. Uh, actually, if you see, there was a, a survey done uh, that how many people in the valley support separatism or how many people in the valley support secession from India in particular. And it was found that like around some 7% of people supported that. 
Uh, but these were the people who were active and who were, you know, agitating or who were uh, vocal, etc. Uh, if you look at the rest of the 80, 90, 95 percent population, 92 percent population, um, they just want to get on with their lives. Today, if you see, today, if you talk to businessmen, they are saying that we are happy in 30 years for the first time. We are doing business and they are saying that election ko thoda aur delay kar do. Hum log ko thoda aur business karne do. Abhi humne business kiya hi kahan hai. Tis saal baad to abhi teen saal ka business hua hai. Uh, students can now have different dreams. Matlab pehle ek hi dream hota tha, azadi hai, shahid hona hai. Yehi ek dream hota tha. Lekin now they can have dreams, they can have aspirations. Was that a legitimate dream or was that something that was orchestrated? I I cannot say whether it was legitimate. People believed in it. Uh, they had all sorts of convictions. Uh, that is not for me to say what is legitimate or what is not. But it was definitely an unattainable uh, dream. And many politicians, see, I don't want to point fingers. I don't want to talk against people. But let's just say the whole ecosystem was sort of conspiring to keep that mirage up because it was helping them electorally or it was politically correct or exp you know there was a political expediency. Uh, but it was an unattainable dream and like somebody really needed to break it to us that you know uh, this is it uh, we have to move ahead and now we are talking about Viksit Bharat, Viksit Jammu and Kashmir right. So we also have a right to move ahead but because of that burden of the conflict because of people dying all around you uh, we also had that survivor guilt in a sense you know survivor's guilt where it felt illegitimate to dream of uh, things such as you know I should have a good bank balance I should invest in stocks my startup should have this much capital investment so all these dreams so that's what I'm saying now we can actually dream but about the personal people growth. who induce that survivors guilt for the lack of a better phrase mm -hmm. are still around and they want to get back with the vengeance into the political process they still think that they're legitimate or they're credible and are I'm talking, talking about, about the, the Abdullahs I'm the talking about the Muftis I'm talking about the established political class that has ruled Kashmir for 75 years mm -hmm. right up till the time well till 2019 so let's just go back a little bit more mm -hmm. so 72 years mm -hmm. and they say let's quickly bring back the democratic process so we can get straight back into the hurly-burly of politics in fact it's strange but when article 370 was diluted uh, they came together and formed a Gupkar alliance yeah. And now that alliance has also been sacrificed because they're looking at the bigger prize. So most of the Kashmiris have reconciled with the post-370 reality. They are happy. No, but have they recognized that these people are interlopers, perhaps? Um, see, there is some toning down of uh, that rhetoric as well. If you see, for example, National Conference, uh, they have, I think, uh, you know, reconciled with the Supreme Court verdict. I'm not sure what the PDP is saying these days. But overall, there is an understanding that there was a process there was a constitutional challenge to the abrogation of article 370 and the supreme court uh, overturned that challenge it sustained it upheld the abrogation so many people have reconciled with that uh, the political what class you? also do you believe that article 370 the in emotional as they say and physical as well as of course political integration of jammu and kashmir was much delayed should it have happened earlier now in hindsight we are seeing that right now that somebody has demonstrated it now we can say that that we should do it But earlier it looked impossible. We were like, the moment it was abrogated, I was like, I'm going to the Supreme Court. I was one of the you know petitioners in the Supreme Court. I'm like, no, this can't be done. So this was uh, sort of held up as a inviolable. Uh, uh, eventually it turned out to be just a paper wall. And uh, that paper wall has been brought down and people have reconciled with the reality. And now we can move ahead. We can sort of move on from there. And now we can talk about development. Now we can talk about uh, that I should be a successful entrepreneur, I should have a career. We can talk about those things. Is Shaila Rashid the real deal? Is she really convinced about the fact that Article 370 was just this paper, what did you call it? Paper uh, wall. Paper uh, wall. Uh -huh. And that it perhaps didn't serve the purpose. It might have even been ultra virus of the larger constitutional scheme you probably yeah. mean yeah. so see, this is not about me this is honestly like i'm only no, but it uh, is about you i mean you're going to have conviction as you go forward and if you're going to say that this is opportunism that is sort of dictating shaila rashid no, you so can always go back to, say, to what i'm trying to say is that uh, you talk to anyone in kashmir and they will echo this sentiment so it isn't just me saying this uh, and i can feel differently i can sort of you know i am not a 
spokesperson of any party. I'm not in the Bharatiya Janata Party, nothing like that. Uh, tomorrow, if I feel that some issue needs redressal, I'll talk about it. So I'll talk about the stray dog menace. I'll talk about the electricity issues. But as I said, the fact that now we are even talking about these issues uh, is is a byproduct, is a result of the fact that Article 370 was done away with, and now we can sort of you know move on. Now it's this is not to say that I am pro government. I'm, I may tomorrow I may on some issue I may oppose the government if I don't like some policy if something the electricity power cuts are happening I may oppose the government you know as a private citizen so this isn't about me but by and large the population of Jammu and Kashmir um, at least Kashmir uh, you know maybe I should not speak for Jammu because I don't know uh, uh, how the sentiment is there I'm only talking about the Kashmir division um, yes there is a general sentiment that this was needed this was necessary it has given clarity to our youth uh, ki delusional dream that is unattainable Hindustan ke saath chalna hai. Uh, this is now what our future is and you know we have to now think about you know how to move forward and definitely we'll have demands we'll have grievances uh, and we'll raise them we'll take them up with the uh, center Koi or political party aegi, and CPDP whoever forms the government they will also raise those demands um, but I think there is an overall sort of even in the political class I think there is a consensus I'm not sure what the PDP is saying these days exactly but there is a consensus that you know wo jo tha ki us position pe jana hai, that is gone like that moment has passed so let me ask you because violence is continuing mm, yes in yes. Kashmir yes. so let's not sort of deny that yes there has been of course normalcy as in there is better law and order situation yes but there is Islamist violence that is still happening. And there are also targeted killings that are happening yeah. uh, and like Pakistan I feel has moved from this uh, you know sort of that uh, modus operandi of doing bomb blasts and all of that um, and the focus now is on targeted killings so you see uh, and you know which might actually create a more fear factor in a sense uh, and also you see that uh, the violence has moved to Peer Panjal infiltration has uh, moved to that region uh, certainly there are those concerns uh, but definitely like we now have a strong government which is able to take uh, bold decisions and you mentioned this uh, you know whole thing of Islamist violence and radicalization if you see the government has also cracked down on Jamaat -e Islami now left to the political class of Kashmir this may have never happened honestly and you know in a sense it is good that BJP doesn't at this point doesn't even expect any votes or anything from Kashmir because that's when you can actually take the decisions that are needed. Now, if they have a stake there, if they have 2-4-5-10% vote, then they can't take that decision. Paate, banning of Jamaat Islami and all that. Uh, Shaila Rashid, look, you've already had a taste hmm. of politics. Hmm. And I suppose it is something that continues to attract you because you want to be a change agent. Hmm. And the only way you can actually be a change agent is to be part of a process hmm. that can deliver change. Hmm. So, if Shaila Rashid were to tomorrow turn into a politician, what would be your message? What would be the message that you would be campaigning on? Let's assume if that were to happen tomorrow. Uh, so, I hope that this doesn't sound like sycophancy or anything, but I really am inspired by this vision of Vixit Bharat that Prime Minister Modi has uh, outlined. And it's a very inclusive call. You know, honestly, I could be in the Congress party or any other party and I could be part of Vixit Bharat because it's a shared dream. Uh, and it's a good dream. Uh, President ABJ Abdul Kalam, he had given us the dream of uh, Vision 2020 for India. Uh, and this 2047 is a clarion call for all of us to do our personal best. Uh, so I really like this speech by the Prime Minister. He had given this speech to University Vice Chancellors, where he said that TK, he's not talking about some Vixit Bharat in an altruistic sense. He's talking about individualism, that you do your personal best, you be the best in your profession. Uh, you elevate your individual you know skills if there are some skills that you lack you pick up those skills you be the best version of yourself that's how you'll take your country forward that's how we'll become a Vixit Bharat and that's the sort of vision I want to give to my community to Kashmiris to Muslim whoever you know I um, uh, is willing and ready to listen uh, that we need to do our personal best so we look up mantein ki Hindustan and Muslim manu ki halat bhot kharaab hai Sachar committee ne bola hai there's a long way we need to go education UPSC may come representation uh, but uska solution kya hai uska solution ye hai ki we have to do our personal best we have to get good education we have to get uh, skilled we have to you know compete we have to be competitive uh, so that's the sort of uh, vision that I want to this seems quite 
divorced from what is happening in the mainstream, in mainland India in let us say in that sense How of the so? term. Uh, because obviously a large number of opposition political parties hmm. complain about the fact that this government does not really have a vision for let us say the minorities and the vision they have for the minorities uh, is not compatible to a larger See, secular matter. ethos. Uh, you, you, does I that not bother you as a Muslim first? Uh, so what or do you see yourself as an Indian it first? Is, uh, so it did bother me for a really long time. In my previous avatar, I was very sort of moved by whatever is happening and all of that. But eventually, I've realized that मतलब I mean, जो एक community होती है किसी भी काम का जो अपने अगर उनको अपनी हालत बदलनी है अपनी किस्मत बदलनी है उनको खुद से उठना पड़ेगा. We cannot wait for the government or we cannot be sort of responding to what the government is doing, what a political party is doing. No. Uh, I think that we need like more, uh, we need a sort of Muslim civil society, uh, which is non-clergy and non-state. Our heroes cannot always be politicians and religious leaders. Uh, we have to look up to people like, so I, um, you know, I keep giving this example, um, say Mohammed Shami, he's doing really well in one field. He got the Arjun award and that's the highest level that a sporting, uh, you know, sports person can uh, reach in India. Uh, there is Nigar Shaji, she is a Muslim lady, she is in charge of Aditya, you know, solar exploration program at ISRO. There are so many Muslims who are doing so well. Uh, you look at Dr. Zaheer Kazi, who just got the Padma Shri. Um, he has devoted his life, I mean, he is a cancer surgeon, but he is oncologist, he is, and uh, he has devoted his life to it, the cause of education. So, मतलब कोई आएगा नहीं, कोई government नहीं आएगी, कोई political party नहीं आएगी हमारी हालत बदलने के लिए हमें खुद से करना पड़ेगा, हमें खुद से education skills whatever is needed. Um, I was listening to again like this will come across as I am trying to favour a certain political party or something, but not really. I was just listening to uh, Shahzad Punawala, who is the BJP spokesperson. He gave an interview to Barkhadat, so she is asking him कि uh, BJP का कोई Muslim सांसद नहीं है, BJP का कोई Muslim विधायक नहीं है, something something. So he said कि पार्सियों का है कोई Jews ka hai koi, does that mean ki they are not progressing? Unho ne kabhi ye bula ki bhai hamara koi sansad nahi hai, is liye hum progress nahi kar pa rahe hai. It doesn't depend on that. So my theory of change, yes, I would say it has changed. Um, because earlier I was looking more to the political establishment, government, uh, ruling party, etc. No, but we need to look within. We need to work for our own education and our own upliftment. We have to change uh, our So the Prime Minister has given this uh, a name. He says, Sabka Vikas, Sabka Saat, yes. and Sabka Vishwas. Yeah. Uh, do you buy into this? Do you believe that is that's something that he is practicing? Uh, uh, no secrets about the fact that I was highly cynical about it, right? However, when I engaged with the state, so I, there was one version of me when I was an activist, when I was viewing everything from a political lens. Uh, but when I engaged, uh, so after Article 370 abrogation, I just went into a shell and I just for four years, I didn't do anything, I didn't say anything. I just engaged with the state like a private citizen. So I applied for my domicile. I uh, did my whole Aadhaar and everything because till then I was anti-Aadhaar also. Uh, I went and wrote some competitive exams. So I was treated by the state on merit. I was not discriminated based on my religion, whatever, political views, etc. So, this model of governance that we have, leave aside the political rhetoric, okay, election jeet ne ke liye kya political rhetoric chahiye hota hai, forget about that for a while. The state is secular, development is secular, digital India is secular. When you engage with the state as a private citizen, they can't tell you ki bhai, aap mudra loan ke liye eligible nahi ho, kyunki aap musulman ho. Aisa to kisi ko nahi bula gaya. Agar aap PM Awas Yojana mein dekhe, us mein jo maximum… No, look, yaha to citizenship. आपको कागज दिखाने पड़ेंगे अगर आपको सिटिजन बनना है। So I, you know, I am not an expert. I am not an expert on CA. I don't want to comment on it. I heard the Honourable Home Minister live the other day, and you know, he made some interesting points about it. And you know, like this is part of India's like larger state citizenship policy. Like he's made it clear that it's not going to affect Muslims. And we honestly, I think that Muslims, we should. Stop looking at everything diversionary. We should just stop reacting to everything. हमें अपने आप को strong बनाना चाहिए. When you have all of your documents in order, when you are educated, when you are part of the economy, nobody can tell you that you are not a citizen all of a sudden. However, having said that, like I am not an expert. I am not a constitutional law expert. So I think it's beyond my domain to comment on it. Okay. Final two questions. 
Shah Rashid, there is a huge demand right now for the restoration of statehood. Hmm. And number two, for most importantly, the democratic process to kick in again. Yeah. Many people are saying that if you can hold a Lok Sabha election, why couldn't you hold a simultaneous assembly election? Where do you stand on this demand? As far as I know, uh, the government has filed an affidavit in the Supreme Court and said that, you know, we will hold um, assembly elections before September. So I think we have to go by that. So do you think uh, this demand that Shaila Rashid must come out and publicly declare her affiliations or her political uh, how should one put it? Ambitions. Uh, uh, ambitions. Uh, so, uh, it's no secret. I am a political being. I am very political, of course. Like, uh, I think I'm one of the most political, um, you know, people <laughs> that you that you see around. There's no secret about that. But ये जो सवाल है कि आप क्या करने वाले हो? आप क्योंकि आप गवर्नमेंट के फेवर में बोल रहे हो आपको लोकसभा, राज्यसभा. What I'm saying is, and this might sound very idealistic, but it's actually spot on. Like, I'm not uh, sort of putting up a pretense or anything. We have got peace for the first time. My generation, 88 born. Pehli baar hum logon ne aman shanti dekhi hai. Ab iske upar, matlab I don't think we need anything else. Mujhe ab Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha kyun chahiye? I've got peace, like you know, which nobody else could deliver. Like, aaj bhot easy lag raha hai bolne mein. Aaj log bol rahe hain election karwao, election karwao. Bhot achhi cheez hai. Ek samay wo tha jahan pe hota tha ki election boycott karo. Election boycott karo se agar ye aaj demand aari hai ki election karao, to aap samajh rahe hain ki hum log kitna uh, how much distance we have covered, how far we have come. Uh, it's, it's, as I said, it's not about me or my... Final question. Pakistan continues to insist in every international fora. Hmm. And they say that there is no normalcy, hmm. that all of this, Aman and all of this is hmm. manufactured. Hmm. It's come because, the, as I'm saying, hmm. the opinion of the Kashmiri has been completely... Uh, so that's one. Hmm. And two, POK. Do you ever aspire? for united uh, Kashmir under the rubric of the Indian constitution and what, what would hmm. you answer to those people in Kashmir who at one time were some of your biggest supporters? Uh, I'll tell you honestly, I don't know about Pakistan, I don't know about POK, I don't look, know what it looks like. Should they like. stay out of our business? Uh, Pakistan, uh, yes certainly because see, uh, they should just leave us alone. Pakistan should leave Kashmiris alone. We finally had, you know, peace and you know as they say that blood is thicker than water. Uh, if they really do care about us so much, then just let us be. India is a success story and our best interests lie, uh, you know, in being with India. So, yeah, Pakistan should leave us alone, I feel. And uh, uh, in in uh, you, you know, about POK, the whole problem arose because of the partition. I mean, in my personal view, I feel that the partition was a huge mistake. And um, like thanks to Mrs. Indra Gandhi who <laughs> liberated Bangladesh, we would have been flanked by Pakistan on two sides. Now, one side is the other side, the other side. Uh, so, I think it was a huge mistake. I don't know who came up with this uh, brilliant idea. Uh, but yeah, like the Kashmir issue may not have arisen at all if, you know, it weren't for. I honestly don't know much about like POK. I just started following this blog, you know, vlogger, this chota bacha. What's his name? Shirazi Shirazi. I'm that, sorry, uh, you know, some yeah. like vlogger from uh, Siachin who is like, he's very cute and he's just a kid. Um, so, I haven't like, I don't know anything about POK to have any sort of, you know, feelings about it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice speaking to you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you.